सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मत आचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा टुडे इज जून एट ट्वेंटी इट्स अ वेरी आस्पिशियस डे एज इट हैपन्स टू बी दि वन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ जयंती ऑफ कांची महापेरिवा so i'd like to welcome you today to guru kripa video edition number 8 which coincides with this 124th jayanti we are indeed very fortunate to live in the era of kanchi mahapariva whose work to nurture our sanatana dharma is unmatched so in this edition of guru krupa i'd like to share with you some of the thoughts of mahapariva on the importance of vedas the original lectures were in tamil and they were translated by many people what i'm going to provide you or the extracts from a book titled the hindu dharma published by bharatiya vidya bhavan so let me start quoting mahapariva on vedas quote the vedas contain lofty truths people in modern times may not be averse to the idea that these truths are worthy of being cherished society requires knowledge arts etc the vedas are a store house of knowledge so the idea that we must have a special class of people to propagate the truths contained in the vedas may seem reasonable enough what difference would it make to the society if this class of people ceased in toning the vedas to understand this question we must first try to find out the nature of the vedas no purpose is served by approaching this subject entirely on an intellectual level we must accept the words of great man who knew the vedas deep in their hearts how can we do that sir some people might protest we are rationalists and we can be convinced of a truth or a statement only on the basis of reason or direct knowledge what do we do then how can anyone claim as a matter of right that all subjects ought to be brought within the ken of human reasoning man is but one among countless creatures take for instance the experiments conducted by a physicist in his laboratory does a cow understand them if the scientist formulates certain laws on the basis of the experiments does a cow say that these laws of physics do not exist but how are humans ignorant of physics to know about such laws they trust the statements made by people proficient in the subject to illustrate take the example of a common appliance let us assume that you are told that it works on the basis of certain principles of science don't you accept these principles by observing how the appliance works in the same way we must have faith in what great men say about the vedas great men who live strictly adhering to the shastras we must also place our faith on the scriptures on the basis of the fruits or benefits yielded by them the benefits we directly perceive one such fruit is still there 
for all of us to see. It is Hinduism itself, the religion that has withstood the challenges of all these millennia. The sages transcended the frontiers of human knowledge and became one with the universal reality. It is through them that the world received the Vedic mantras. This is one of the basic concepts of our religion. If you do not accept that human beings can attain such atmic power as exemplified by these seers, any further talk on this subject would be futile. One could point to you, great men who you can see for yourself, great men who have perfected themselves and acquired powers not shared by the common people. But if you think them to be cheats or fraudulent men, any further talk would again be useless. In your present state of limited understanding, the argument that denies the existence of anything beyond the range of human reason and comprehension itself betrays the height of rationalism. Some people are at a loss to understand why the sound of the Vedas is given so much of importance. How does sound originate or how is it cast? When there is vibration, where there is movement or motion, there is sound. This is strictly according to rational science. Speech is constituted of vibrations of many kinds. We hear sounds with our ears, but these are sounds that are converted into electric waves and these we cannot hear. We know this from the working of the telephone and the radio. All that we hear or perceive others are indeed electric waves. Science has come to the point of recognizing them to be electric waves. The man who sees and listens, his brains are all electric waves. There are countless numbers of inert objects in the world, land, masses and mountains, rivers and oceans and so on. Also, there are sentient creatures of many kinds. All of them must have been created out of something. During creation, this something must have vibrated in many ways and given rise to all that we see today. If all our moments of sound there must have existed numerous different kinds of sound before creation. In this creation, one is sustained by another. In the process of mutual sustenance, different movements and sounds must be produced. It is not necessary that vibration should form a part of only gross activities. Science has discovered that even our thinking process is a kind of electric current or energy. Each thought process is a form of electric current or energy and it must produce a vibration and a sound. This kind of sound being very subtle, we do not hear it with our human ears. Just as there are bacteria which do not, we do not see them with our naked eye, there are many sounds that our ears do not pick up. According to science, any physical or mental movement must produce sound. The idea that each moment produces its own sound may be put differently this. To create a particular sound, a particular moment must be produced. Take the case of a musician singing. If you want to sing like him, bring out the variations like him, you will have to produce the same vibrations that he creates in his throat. Sound and vibration or motion more go together. The vibrations produce either a gross object or a mental state. We come to the conclusion that creation is a product of sound. This ancient concept 
is substantiated by science itself. Creation, the many things connected with it, thoughts and moments, and the sound associated with them fill space. What happens to the sound produced by the clapping of our hands? It remains in space. Good as well as bad actions produce their own sounds as well as moments associated with them. Conversely, the creation of these type of moments will result in good as well as evil. To produce good thoughts in people, good moments must be created. The sounds corresponding to them must be produced. Can we generate such sounds that produce good thoughts for the welfare of mankind? The mantras of the Vedas are sounds that have the power to inspire good thoughts in people. One more thing. We need food for our sustenance. And to grow food, there must be rain. The formation of clouds and their precipitations are dependent on certain vibrations. Rainfall depends on the production of particular sounds, which in turn create particular vibrations. The same applies to all of our needs in life. It is true that unnecessary and evil objects are also produced by sound. But the one and only goal of the sound of the Vedas is the creation of well-being throughout the world. But are sound and vibrations produced spontaneously? If vibrations arise on their own, they will be erratic and confusing and not related to one another. What do we see in the cosmos? There is a certain orderliness about it and one thing in it is linked to another. So what do we infer from this? That a great intelligence has formulated the scheme that we see that it has created from its own vibrations. The Vedas are sounds emanating from the vibrations of this great intelligence. That is why we believe that the mantras of the Vedas originate from the Paramatman himself the great almighty. We must take special care of such sounds to ensure the good of the world. Yes, the Vedic mantras are sequences of sounds that are meant for the good of the world. Unquote. You know, this is a very rare talk by Mahapariva and it seems to coincide so well with the upcoming Maharudram event here in Chicago, starting tomorrow, 9th of June, and ending on 11th of June. It's a three-day event, which has a Maharudram, where we will have more than 121 Ritviks reciting the Rudram, Sri Rudram, in synchronous sound. And it is a delight to hear such sounds. And one has to experience it. So this is a beautiful message conveyed by Mahapariva on the importance of Vedas. So with this, we conclude Guru Kripa session number eight. Please stay tuned for the next one. Thank you and have a nice day. Jay Jay Shankara Hara Hara Shankara Jay Jay Shankara Hara Hara Shankara